Hey guys, Woodruff here. So let's talk about cataracts. So um, cataracts are one of the three major eye disorders that you need to know about. So this is a part of my longer lecture. Um, cataracts specifically um, is going to be the first one we go over. And then the next video will be about retinal detachment. And the last one will be about glaucoma. Um, and there are two types of glaucoma. We kind of do them together. Um, so yes, yeah, so let's first get into cataracts. So we just got done with vision loss, talking about what vision loss looks like. And pretty much all of the disorders we're going to talk about are some type of vision loss or the big issue at the end of the day is vision loss. Um, but let's get deeper into this. That's just a video about what cataracts are and how vision works. Um, and effectively what cataracts are, an, are an opacity, um, or, um, what do you call it? A cloudiness think of the lens. So pretty much what happens is you have your lens and your lens, like we talked about what's normal, it should be clear. So you should be able to see right through um, to be able to see things. Now, when things get cloudy, you're going to be unable to see well. Um, and so this, um, the biggest issue here, of course, is going to be vision loss. So as time gets, um, goes on, this, most of this is like age related. What happens is these proteins and other things start to clump on your lens. Um, and, um, it leads to these very, you know, cloudy, um, co very cloudy covered lens, which equals like a lot of vision issues. It's usually very gradual. It's not, um, like a sudden thing. Like you wake up in the morning and you got a cataract. It's usually slow over time. Um, other things that and it can be one eye or both eyes. It just varies. Uh, most of them, like I said, are related to age, but it also could be because you had some sort of trauma, um, a lot of uh, light exposure or diabetes. Uh, people with diabetes are higher risk for these. So my main assessment is going to be just an eye exam, visual acuity test. You're going to find there's not a lot of diagnostics for ears and eyes. Um, I'm not going to go very in depth into those tests, um, but um, they are... Um, uh, what do you call it? Just knowing the basics, like what eye exams we might do is as far as you need to know. We may also do a color perception test for these people because of the cloudiness and that protein clumping on their lens. It can lead them to uh, have decreased color, like to decreased ability to differentiate color. Um, we want to ask them to specific questions that are more characteristic of uh, cataracts, and that's going to be, is their vis vision worse at night, or do they feel like they have a glare at night? Because that can be a, a specific sign of cataracts. And it's just good to also assess like if they're having pain or not, because we're going to talk about this, but there's uh, most of the vision loss that occurs you know, across these diseases that we're talking about, there's no pain. It's like a painless um, loss of vision. But if they're having pain, it's going to tell us there's a much bigger problem going on. So they should have no pain, but a decrease in their ability to see colors clearly. Um, it, they may complain, hey, it gets worse as the day goes on or at night when they're driving, it's really hard to see. Um, and then just general visual acuity has decreased. And I should say, more than anything, you're going to actually physically see, you can physically see the cataracts in their eyes. And um, when you shine a light in their eyes, it's almost going to be like you can kind of see the glare, like you can see the cloudiness. Um, the better or worse is going to be the same. It's all about whether their vision, like, you know, it's getting better if their vision improves or their other symptoms, like their ability to see color, um, the their driving at night abilities or their ability to see at night are, is going to improve. Um, whereas if they're, they have new symptoms, worsening symptoms, decrease in vision, that's going to show that it's getting worse. And again, it goes down to safety because if they're getting worsening cloudiness, worsening, um, uh, what do you call it? protein clumping in their lens, they're going to have worse vision. So um, there's a, you know, kind of what we would call a conservative treatment and then a, um, a more aggressive or non-conservative treatment. So conservative um, is like, you know, might also be looked at a modest treatment. It's going to think of this as like a non-surgical treatment. Like, can we, is there anything we can do where we can just make like lifestyle changes? Um, or um, more gentle changes where we don't have to be, or let's think of conservatives as at least invasive. Um, and so none of these are going to cure cataracts, but it's kind of like all these are putting a bandaid on them. That's going to help them to 
um, you know, get a little bit, uh, get a little bit better or improve their symptoms and improve their quality of life. Cause you have to think a lot of these people since age is related, you know, they might be in their eighties and not really want to have, um, eye surgery, et cetera. So some people, what they choose to do is just adjust their eyewear. This is a vision issue. Keep increasing my lens prescription, um, to be able to see. Um, then also a lot of the other stuff we talked about, like with vision loss, like increasing lighting, using magnifiers. And Hey, if my biggest problem is I can't drive at night and then stop driving at night if that's an option for me. So make those lifestyle changes. Um, so none of those require surgery or major um, medical costs or changes, um, you know, just aside from, you know, needing to increase the eyewear prescription. On the other hand, there is a surgery that can be done um, and, you know, a cataract removal, it's an incision and removal, um, which is what this disgusting picture is. Um, so when I was growing up, I loved watching surgeries. Um, I always thought I was going to end up in the OR because I think like watching surgeries is cool, but as an OR nurse, you don't really get to watch the surgeries or you're like very focused on what you're doing. Like, even if you're like doing the role of like the surgical tech, um, it's not as glamorous as what it looks. But, um, what do you call them? I, I, the, every time though, I'd be sitting there and I'd be watching some really cool surgery and then like an eye surgery would come on and I'd be like, mm, yeah, that's going to be a hard pass. Um, so yeah, no way. Um, anyway, uh, what do you call them? When you're studying, um, ear and eye disorders, there is a variety of procedures and surgeries. You do not have to know in depth about the surgery, but you do need to know the role of the nurse post-operatively. And most of it's going to be around teaching. Um, additionally, um, you want to, uh, ensure that you are looking at, um, what do you call them? Some of the general like classes and things of the meds. We do not teach meds in depth and cataracts is not one that you really need to know the meds for, you know, they might be on some anti-inflammatories, you know, for a lot of these surgeries, they dilate their eyes with drops, um, you know, and stuff like that. But you do not have to know about the mydriax, meiotic, meiotics, maybe is how you say it, like all the different types of drops. Um, whatever I have on my slides here around medications is as far as you need to go. And I'll kind of touch on it more with each disease processes, but um, each of the disease processes, but you do not have to know in depth for the meds um, on our end, because it's not something, you know, you're going to give um, some of these meds pretty regularly, um, but this is more of a specialty where you don't really need to know. Like it's very rare for a regular bedside nurse to be doing um, uh, other than like uh, glaucoma drops. It's very rare to be giving, you know, dilating drops and stuff like that. Anyway, for cataract post-operative, I want to keep the lights dim because kind of like I brought up, one of the things we do is we dilate their eyes. So remember earlier I was talking about normally, um, when I'm in a dark space, my eyes are very, uh, very, um, uh, open and dilated. And then when light comes in, they contract to adjust to the light. Um, and so what, when they're doing the surgery, they dilate the eyes and kind of keep them open. So if, if my eyes are kind of stuck open, normally when light comes in, they contract and adjust to the light. I don't have that when I have those drops in that are kind of forcing them to stay, um, dilated. So when light comes in, it's going to be really painful and really hard. So usually we have eye protection on immediately post-operative, like those big, cute, um, sunglasses, visor kind of things. Um, so we want to keep the lights dim, use protective eyewear if needed. And we want to teach them um, how to use their eye drops, um, how to care for their um, their eyes, to know like when there's signs of infection. Like we definitely want them to avoid any sort of infection in their eyes um, and know what an infection would look like and when to report it. Um, the patient may have like some mild pain after this procedure, but they really shouldn't have much, if anything. And if they do, um, you know, and that's not better with pain medicine, they need to report it to their doctor immediately because pain is not high, like a lot of, I shouldn't say any pain, but a lot of pain or like moderate or severe pain is not expected after this procedure. Um, depends uh, like eye patches, you know, the new textbook says that it depends on the preference of the provider. Um, but just know if someone ever has an eye patch on, it affects their depth perception because we need both of our vision to be able to have depth perception. So they might be difficulty like with stairs and stuff like that. So just um, tell them to be super cautious, maybe hold on to someone if they're, um, you know, while they're using that eye patch. And let them know that they can have immediate improvements in their vision, or it may take some time um, so that they're not like, did I do this for nothing? So 
Um, and then for all eye surgeries, um, we want to avoid any activities that are going to increase our intraocular pressure, which is the pressure in our eyeball. So um, any sort of bending, stooping, coughing or lifting. So anytime we increase pressure anywhere else in the body, it increases um, pre pressure in other compartments, including our eyeballs. Um, so we don't want to do anything that's going to like um, tear at those suture lines and things like that. Um, general education for people with cataracts is going to be wearing sunglasses, avoiding any unnecessary radiation, and then vitamin C and vitamin E are very important for um, eye health. Um, so effectively protect your eyes from injury and trauma, which can lead to cataracts, um, and then um, keep eye health with vitamin C and vitamin E. I think, is that the last one? Yes. Um, I'm not going to show this video, but you definitely want to know how to administer eye drops. And the, the big thing is, is just where you're supposed to administer them and that you want to avoid systemic um, uh, systemic absorption by pressing in on, uh, what do you call it? The, the, it's like, it's the, it's on the, like the lacrimal duck, um, but you want to, um, like put pressure on, um, the inner part of the eye, um, not intense pressure, but light pressure there to prevent systemic absorption of meds, but, um, definitely watch some, um, eye drop videos to help you with, um, understanding that I think visualization is key. Anyway, next video is on retinal detachment. I'll see you there.